This video tutorial is about the adaptions of plants to the availability of water. For most plants living on land, access to water can be a problem. As you learnt in previous topics, water is lost by transpiration because plants exchange gases with the atmosphere via their stomata. During the day, plants take up a lot of carbon dioxide for use in photosynthesis. They must also remove oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. So the stomata must be open during the day. While the stomata are open, there is an easy route for water to be lost. This water must be replaced. Plants living on land must be adapted to reduce the loss of water and replace the water that is lost. Most terrestrial plants can reduce their water losses by structural and behavioural adaptions. A waxy cuticle on the leaf will reduce water loss due to evaporation through the epidermis. The stomata are often found on the undersurface of leaves, not on the top surface. This reduces the evaporation due to direct heating from the sun. Most stomata are closed at night when there is no light for photosynthesis and deciduous plants lose their leaves in winter when the ground may be frozen, making water less available, and when temperatures may be too low for photosynthesis. Marum grass specialises in living on sand dunes. The conditions are particularly harsh because any water in the sand drains away quickly. The sand may be salty and the leaves are often exposed to very windy conditions. Marum grass is a xerophyte, a plant adapted to living in arid conditions. The adaptions of marum grass include the leaf is rolled longitudinally so that air is trapped inside. This air becomes humid, which reduces water loss from the leaf. The leaf can roll more tightly in very dry conditions. There is a thick waxy cuticle on the outer surface of the rolled leaf, the upper epidermis, to reduce evaporation. The stomata are on the inner surface of the rolled leaf, the lower epidermis, so they are protected by the enclosed airspace. The stomata are in pits in the lower epidermis which is also folded and covered by hairs. These adaptions help to reduce air movement and therefore loss of water um, or water vapour. The spongy mesophyll is very dense with few air spaces, so there is less surface area for evaporation of water. Cacti show other features to overcome arid conditions. Cacti are succulents. They store water in their stems, which become fleshy and swollen. The stem is often ribbed or fluted so that it can expand when water is available. The leaves are reduced to spines. This reduces the surface area of the leaves. When the total leaf surface area is reduced, less water is lost by transpiration. The stem is green for photosynthesis and the roots are very widespread in order to take advantage of any rain that does fall. Other xerophytic features include closing the stomata when water availability is low. This will reduce water loss and so reduce the need to take up water. Some plants have a low water potential inside their leaf cells this is achieved by maintaining a high salt concentration in the cells. The low water potential reduces the evaporation of water from the cell surfaces as the water potential gradient between the cells and the leaf air spaces is reduced. And finally, a very long tap root that can reach water deep underground is another feature of xerophytes. In comparison, hydrophytes are plants that live in water, for example, water lilies. These plants have easy access to water, 
but are faced with other issues such as getting oxygen to their submerged tissues and keeping afloat. They need to keep their leaves in the sunlight for photosynthesis. The adaptions of water lilies include many large air spaces in the leaves. This keeps the leaves afloat so that they are in air and can absorb sunlight. The stomata are on the upper epidermis, so they are exposed to air to allow gas exchange. And the leaf stems has many large air spaces. This helps with buoyancy, but also allows oxygen to diffuse quickly to the roots for aerobic respiration. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour from the surfaces of the leaves, but the water will not evaporate into water or into air that has very high humidity. If water cannot leave the plant, then the transpiration stream stops and the plant cannot transport mineral ions up to the leaves. Many plants contain specialist structures at the tips or margins of their leaves called hydathodes. These structures can release water droplets, which may then evaporate from the leaf surface.